Long queues outside polling stations on day one of three, an electoral foregone conclusion. Because when polls close, the president will remain Vladimir Putin, no matter the other names on the ballot papers. Such events are unfolding now. Of course, I want to make my own choice and support our commander-in-chief. I decided to vote for the communists, for Haritonov, because I want some small changes and some more justice in our society. Yes, I am for Putin because we need stability, definitely. We already know what to expect from this man, from the president. And this time it is not just in Russia or in embassies abroad where people are voting, but on Ukrainian soil too. In the territories which Russia now occupies two years into this war. Here, a polling station in Mariupol, a pro-Russian view because those who don't feel this way would not dare to speak out. Since we are a new region that joined Russia, it was important in our life to vote and choose our president of our Russia. Vladimir Putin voted online, electronic voting a new feature in presidential polls. His political nemesis, Alexei Navalny, the one man who might have challenged him, is dead. His final call from jail was for people to come to the polling stations at noon this Sunday to show that they don't agree. Denis Sakharov wants to go. He feels the role of those who oppose this regime now is to keep the focus on all those that remain behind bars. The whole concept of Russian politics can be described as necropolitics because it's all about death and about survival. We wait for Putin to die. We look at political prisoners being killed. But I think we need to think about the living and people who are alive and fixate on them, on those who we can still save, like Yashin Karamurza and all the political prisoners, because they are still alive and they are in grave danger. Protest is manifesting itself already in different ways. Arson at one polling station. A Molotov cocktail outside another. Green dye poured into ballot boxes to spoil the votes. A febrile atmosphere in a country at war. And in Belgorod, right on Russia's border with Ukraine, more shelling from the Ukrainian side and more armed incursions from that way too. The Nazi Kyiv regime is trying to carry out a number of demonstratively criminal armed attacks with the aim of disrupting the voting process and intimidating people in the regions bordering Ukraine. This primarily involves striking civilian settlements on Russian territory. But who can blame Ukraine for wanting to strike back when this is the destruction that Russia continues to wreak on their homes, scores killed in Odessa this Friday? The man responsible far away in the Kremlin, determined not to stop. Diana Magne, Sky News.